Oh hey there! I'm glad you made it to the second episode of Build a System HTTP Server series. I dedicate this episode to decoding the HTTP request and encoding the response. I will also offer reliable ways to test our code for a more resilient project. If you haven't watched the first episode of the series just yet, I think you may want to. Just click here or in the description of the video to watch it. I will wait patiently. All right, now that I know that we're on the same page, let's write some code. For this project, I will use JavaScript and Dino, but the concept don't change no matter what language or runtime you're using. Also, one last disclaimer. This project's aim is to educate. It will be in no way the most complete or the most performant. I will discuss specifically the improvements we can bring to make it more performant, and I will go through various iterations with that in mind. At the end of the project, if there are elements that are worth salvaging, I will replace the essential parts. All that to say, just enjoy the ride. The first thing that I need to do is to announce listening on a port. The incoming connection will be represented by a readable, writable resource. First, I will need to read from the resource a specific amount of bytes. For this example, I will read around a kilobyte. The variable xs is a uin8 array. I already made a video about this, but long story short, a typed array is an array that can only hold a specific amount of bit per item. In this case, we need 8 bits or 1 byte array because you need 8 bits to encode a single UTF-8 character. As a convenience, I will decode the bytes to a string and log the result to the console. Finally, I will encode the response and write it to the resource. Now we'll run the code, so Dino run allow net and 0, 0, 0, 80, 80, cli.js. So I hit enter and on a different terminal session, I can use curl to send an HTTP request. So curl local host 8080. And now on the server terminal, we can see the request and on the client terminal, we can see the response body, hello world. To get this started on the right foot, I will refactor the code into a function named serve in a file called server.js. This function will take a listener and a function that takes a uint8 array and returns a promise of a uint8 array. Notice that the read function returns the number of bytes that was read. We can use the subarray method to pass a length on the appropriate sequence of the function. So now I'm back on the cli.js file. And the first thing I'll do, clear this up and import my new function. Here I wrote some utilities that will help me decode and encode the type to arrays into strings and vice versa. Next, I'm adding a conditional to make sure that this code only get executed if the file was called directly from the terminal. I will set the port to either the first argument passed to the command or 8080 and call my serve function. The first argument is a listener and the second argument is a function that takes a type to array. The first thing I'll need to do is to decode the typed array into a string which will define the request variable. Now if you remember correctly, a HTTP request is usually split into two parts. The first part is the header, then you get an empty line, and then you get the body. So in this case, if I split my request on an empty line, I should get on one hand the header and on the other hand, the body. Now, if I split this header on every line, the first one should be the request line, and then I may have a list of other headers line. At this point, I can split the request line on the first space, giving me the method and the path. Finally, if I take my lines array, split each of them on the column, 
then I can reduce them into an object for easy access. And now I can write a handler if the method is get and the path is forward slash. For which I will send a 200 OK response with the body hello world. So my first terminal, I can run my server again. And on the second terminal, I'll make the request. And here we get our hello world, perfect. So here we could be a bit more specific about the request. For example, here it could say, well, I only return hello world if the client accept either anything or text plain. Otherwise, I'll have to return no content. If all fails, I can simply return 404. Now, for good measure, I'll log any error. Now that I have a way to parse the headers, I think it's a good opportunity to officialize all of this and write a new utility function and the appropriate tests. So here I refactor the code we wrote into a function that will return the method, the path, the headers, and the body. And as a convenience, I will also export the decoder and the encoder. So here I prepared my first test where I'm going to parse my request and then I want to make some assertion on the returning object. I will import from the standard library the assert equals function. So I can assert that the method is get, that the path is forward slash, that the host is localhost 8080, and that the client accepts anything. So I can run my test, say dino test, library, utilities, tests.js, and here we go. And our first test is passing. So here I wrote another request to parse. It's a post slash users. And the body content type is application JSON and 23 character. And here we can see the body. To finalize this test, I wrote all my assertions, which I will now run. And it all seems to work. Now that I have a parse request function, logically, I need a new function to stringify the response. I created these three functions. The first one, stringify response, take a response, which is an object, and start the response message, HTTP slash 1.1, and then we need the status code and the reason. So what I did is given a number, we can go to this new file that export all of the status code with the reasons. And then it will stringify the header. So we pass the headers to it. And here we can see that it goes over every entries of the header and then reduce them all into a single string separated by CRLF. This function also called the normalize header key, which will make sure that if any of the key were capitalized properly, well, then they will be. So now I want to test these new functions. So here the first one is for the normalize header key. And you can see I have multiple iteration on capitalization. And I make sure that they're capitalized properly. So if the first letter should be capitalized and then subsequent letter after a dash should be capitalized also. And then I add the last test for stringify response, given a stringified body and an object that has the body, the headers, with our two header content type and content lengths, and the status code 200. If we stringify it, we should get HTTP slash 1.1 200 OK, a new line content type, content length, and then we skip a line, and we have our body, that should be good. Now if I bring up my terminal and test all of this again, and everything is screen. So now, we have everything we need to refactor our handler function and make it more concise and declarative. So I can remove all of this, and replace it with one single function. 
here I had to do some rewiring, but that makes sense. So I can refactor the first one like this, call my stringify response, pass an object, replace my body, my header, and my status code. Now let's just do the other one very quickly. And just like this. So at this point, we can deal with any simple request effectively. To wrap this up and prepare the project for future iteration, I will add a test for the serve function. Obviously, this function is impossible to keep pure and to test without complex integration tests, which I keep for later. An actual connection is a bit fidgety, so I thought I could mock it using a file as a resource since files are readable writable. The first thing I did is to write a function to factorize an async iterator and purposely make it break after the first iteration. After that, I create a file with read write permission. With that, I can write the HTTP request, then move the cursor back to the beginning of the file for the serve function to read back. Within the handler function, I make some assertion on the request for sanity's sake. Then, flush the content and move the cursor back to the beginning before writing a response. Finally, I can move the cursor back to the beginning one last time to read the response, make one last assertion, then clean up to complete the test. So I'll run Dino test one last time with the allow all flag because we have this file that we're managing and then I'll run all the tests in the library directory. And everything passed. So we have all the utilities test from before that are still passing. And here we have our new test. Five, five across the board. At this point, we have a good base to work from. Unfortunately, our server is a little bit limited. For example, if the request or the response is larger than one kilobyte, we'd be missing part of the message. That means no upload or download of even medium-sized files. That's what I plan to cover on the next episode. This will be a great opportunity to get a little bit more familiar with manipulating binary bytes. All of the code for this episode is available on GitHub. The link is in the description. At any rate, if this video was useful to you, hit the like button, leave a comment to let me know, or even better, subscribe if you haven't yet. Okay, bye now.